Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another segment of our episode on the Quran, the Sunnah, and the companions of the Prophet. This is the IOU Insights presentation. And again, I'm your host, Dr. Bilal Phillips, founder of the Islamic Online University. We were looking at the importance of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, in our last segment. And we were comparing them to what happened to Prophet Jesus with his companions and how his religion was changed because his companions didn't have the opportunity or were unable to play the role of preservers of the teachings of Prophet Jesus. Not to say really that those teachings were lost. To be honest, we should know that when Paul was busy changing the religion in Antioch, Actually, the Jerusalem church was headed by James. James, who in the Gospels is called the brother of Jesus. He's referred to in the Gospels as the brother of Jesus. He headed the Jerusalem church. And he and his followers, who came to be known as the Ebionites, in church history. It is recorded that their belief was that God was one, that Jesus was a prophet of God. That was their belief. So it's not to say, and of course that's what Jesus thought, so it wasn't lost altogether. But because in 80, the year 80 after Jesus' departure, the uh, Temple of Solomon was destroyed. The Jews had rebelled against Roman rule. And the Romans scattered all the Jews out of Jerusalem, didn't allow any of them to remain. And of course, the followers of Jesus externally would be like any other Jew. They were no different from the other Jews externally. Their difference in belief was that they believed that Jesus was a prophet of God. The mainstream Jews rejected Jesus. They tried to kill him, tried to crucify him. So that was the difference. And of course, their understanding was based on the understanding that Jesus taught. So now, when they were scattered from Jerusalem, so the main center of the teachings of Jesus was lost. But they went to North Africa. They went to Egypt and elsewhere. They went to Syria. So what we could call the Unitarian teachings remained amongst them. And that is why in the fourth century, when the decision to deify Jesus was confirmed. Jesus was now declared Son of God coexisting with God. He and God were one. And the Holy Spirit was added. The third, the Trinity. That meeting which took place in Nicaea in southern Turkey, in which the, the, the standard for Christian belief was established, called the Nicene Creed. In that meeting, there were bishops who opposed this, who came from Alexandria, from North Africa, from Syria, who opposed. It was the Roman bishops who were promoting this Trinitarian ideal. So 
So the Bishop of Alexandria, his name was Arius. He was the most vocal in opposition to this concept. But the council was to finish him, to declare him a heretic. And anyone who shared his beliefs were to be hunted down, killed, their books were to be burned, to crush and destroy this belief altogether. So it means that this is now 300 years after the time of Jesus. So even though Paul was busy promoting, had busily promoted this new religion called Christianity into Greece and into Rome, and it became the religion of the so-called Holy Roman Empire, it didn't mean that the teachings of Jesus were lost. They continued in Egypt and in other parts of the world, the Unitarian belief. So it wasn't totally lost, just to be fair in that sense. But anyway, the point is that in Islam, the understanding of the companions is considered to be a part of our faith. How they understood Islam is the way Islam is to be understood. It is the preserver of the faith. So, when somebody comes along today and says, for example, that when Allah said in the Quran that Muhammad wasallam was the seal of the prophethood. Khatam and Nabiyyi. You had a man, and there have been others, in India, by the name of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, who claimed that he was a prophet of Allah. So then what is he going to do with this verse? Khatam and Nabiyyi, seal of the prophethood. He said, the word khatam means seal, but it also means ring. If you go to the Arabic dictionary, you'll find that khatam also means a ring, what's put on the finger. So he said that what was meant by that was that Muhammad wasallam, as the ring beautifies the hand, when you put a ring on your hand, it makes your hand look beautiful. As the ring beautifies the hand, Muhammad وسلم, was the beautification of the prophethood, not the last. Okay? This is interpretation to justify his own claim to prophethood. Right? So, who is to say what he said was wrong? We say it was wrong because in Arabia, after the death of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, there was a man in the eastern part of Arabia by the name of Musaylama who claimed he was a messenger of Allah. And the companions of the Prophet wasallam fought him and killed him for that claim. So, if Muhammad Sallallahu wasn't supposed to be the last, why were they fighting and killing him? You say their understanding that Khatam al Nabiyyin meant the last, the end, is the correct understanding. And that is what has preserved Islam till today. Their understanding. So if, for example, people today, they celebrate the birthday of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, you'll find in many Muslim countries, in the calendar, day of celebration, regular anniversary, every year, the date of birth of the Prophet wasallam is there, 12th of Rabi al-Awwal. And they celebrate this as a holiday. It's everywhere. 
Most Muslims do it. But is it right? Is it from Islam? How do we know it's not from Islam? Those people who do it say, yes, it's from Islam. We have been doing it all these generations. You mean all these generations were wrong? Well, we say in the first generation, did they celebrate the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ? No. Why not? Didn't they know they were supposed to celebrate his birthday? Hmm. That is a problem. If they knew they were supposed to celebrate his birthday and they didn't, what is that saying about them? If they didn't know they were supposed to celebrate his birthday and we do now, what is that saying about them? See, that's a problem. So, if it wasn't celebrated in his lifetime, then it should never be celebrated. It is not from Islam. So that's how we are able to go and clean up the practice of Islam today. To remove the things that people have added over the years, over the generations. People have added things from here, there and everywhere. I remember when I was traveling in Mindanao. And I came across uh, a home. We passed by a home. And there were some poles with flags on it. Small, like flags, like banners. And I asked, what is that? Anybody here from Mindanao? What does that mean? When they put the pole with the banner on there outside a house. What is it for? Eh? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. When somebody dies, they put a, a pole with a cloth on it. White. Different colors, they put it. I asked about it, this is what they said. This was the practice to indicate that somebody had died. So, I had previously been to India and I noticed that the Hindus were doing this. And here were the Muslims there in Mindanao doing the same thing. So it means something had come in. Of course, it wasn't done in the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu It wasn't from their practice. This was something from Hinduism, which had existed in Mindanao, because the people before Islam came, they were either animists or they were Hindus. Hinduism had come there before. So some of the teachings were there. When I got married in Cotabato City and they were having the wedding celebration, they had the custom of putting chicken parts in a bowl, right? They took a chicken and they chop it up into pieces and they put it inside of a bowl and I was told to take out one part, right? And they will give this part to an imam and he will interpret it from it, what my future, our future, how our wedding was going to be and how our wedding life was going to be. Fortune telling. Yeah. And of course, Prophet Muhammad had said, whoever goes to a fortune teller, his prayers for 40 days and nights will not be accepted. Very serious. But it was, and I said, no. When I found out what, I said, what is this for? They said, it's so that they can inter... I said, no, no. <laughs> I'll not have anything to do with this. You know, this is not from Islam. I said, no, it's okay. It's just uh, our custom. No, no. Not acceptable Islamically. You know? 
And this is just one example. I'm, I mean, I gave from Mindanao, Muslims of Philippines. But I can give you from India. I can give you from Egypt. It's all around the Muslim world. Similar things have happened. Where people have lost their way. Things have crept in on Islam which have nothing to do with Islam at all. So, for us to understand properly Islam today, we have to go back to the Quran, to the Sunnah, and that according to the understanding of the Sahaba.